Greetings. Welcome once again to Conversations with Ed. I, I had a little mix up with my music so you didn't get to hear that new theme song that we started last week, but I promise you I'll have it next week uh, written and put together by Mr. Frank Abel with Mr. Ed Coleman on Kungus. <laughs> we have a really good show for you tonight as usual. I tell you that every week as I said last week. This week is very special and very special to some of you that are watching because next month is veterans. The whole month of November we're going to be celebrating our veterans. As you can always see my hat up. I tell you guys every week get out there and get your benefits and get healthy and get things going. Tonight we're going to really focus on some things that you can do. I know I keep adding on and adding on with the veterans things, but guess what? That's the way it is. If you pay attention, you're going to get something from it. Have some great guests tonight. Before I get to them, you know I have to say my greetings to Peggy, to Sarah, to Dorothy, to Nurse Diane, Nurse Linda, and all of the rest of you out there that do so much for us and who I've become friends with, having been going to the VA out in McGuire for the last 12, 15 years. Made a lot of friends out there. And if you start going, guess what? You're going to make a lot of friends also. So. What I want you to do now is what I tell you every week. Go get your pens, your pads, call up all your folks, tell them Ed is on, and let's get busy for the night. So we're going to start up. The phone is going to be put on right away because I know you folks are going to have a lot of questions. The phone number is 915-5202. Don't be afraid to use it. Don't be afraid to call up and ask the question. The dumb, the dumb question is the one that's not asked, okay? so. As I said, we have once again some very special guests. I have a repeater over here, and he's probably going to be a guy that you'll see a lot of in the next um, coming weeks and months because he's the one that made it possible for me to do the TV special at McGuire VA Hospital that you're going to be seeing probably next month, and that would be Mr. Scott. How you doing, sir? Okay, we're gonna call it Fernandez. We're gonna call you Dez on the show right. because that's it. But I do want okay. his name is Fernandez Scott. We call him Dez. And this lovely lady sitting next to me. In daughter Perawali. Good evening. I did it right. Yes, you did. Okay. You did a great job. Okay. <laughs> now in daughter has a very special position out at the VA, and you're gonna hear a lot from her this evening. She is the young lady that works with outreach getting some of these guys that are really having a tough time and making it possible for them to get back in life, I guess would be the right mm -hmm. way, way yeah. to describe it. So we're going to hear from uh, both of them tonight. And what we're going to talk about is all of the things that are coming up for November, celebrating veterans and also helping veterans. And there's a couple of things. One thing I wanted to ask you, Des, as I was reading the notes, it fit right in because last week's show was about breast cancer awareness this right. month. Right. And I see that you're having a ladies' evening out at the hospital? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, each year the medical center has a uh, program for breast cancer awareness month. And there are several activities, um, including a, uh, a panel of uh, breast cancer survivors. Uh, there is a uh, women's evening out which is tomorrow from 4.30 to 7. So they'll have a fashion show, uh, vendors there, and just a program for women to come and celebrate the month. Uh, let me ask you this, do, do the ladies have to be veterans? They come or is it open it's, house? It's free and it's open to the public. All right, so you're hearing this. Um, as I said last week, we had two wonderful guests on, uh, Brenda Archer and my friend Barbara Brown, and they gave a whole meaningful conversation about breast cancer awareness and some of the things that the ladies can do to help themselves preventive wise and here you come right at mcguire hospital this is tomorrow evening i know it's short notice but hey if it's good go for it 4 30 to 7 30 in the multi-purpose room with that being said um i see october 28th yep, yep. october 28th uh, this is a very important exposition that we're having at the Medical Center. It's the assistive technology um, uh, fair. So basically for our veterans that are wheelchair bound, they might need to uh, learn how to use an iPad or an iPhone 
to help them with their daily living functions. Uh, there will be sports bikes there. Uh, there will be um, concept and uh, actual models of uh, vehicles that have been adapted for different disabilities so that a veteran can still drive and operate their vehicle. Outstanding. So this will be on October the 28th? Yep, sure will. 8 p.m.? Or 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. All day? Yes, all day. Oh, this is great. And yeah. multi-purpose room again, once again. This one I, I think is specifically for veterans. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So you got that. And you know, I keep telling you, keep a pad and pencil ready on this show because you have to write down a lot of information. Once again, I'm going to give the phone number, and I'll do it for a while until um, it comes up on the screen, 915-5202. So what we're going to start out with, let's start right out with the list. Let's talk about November the 7th, and that's the Veterans Resource Fair hosted by the Richmond VA Medical Center and the city of Richmond. Very important. Yes, And is. the city of Richmond. Yep. Tell that us is, about that's, it. That's going to be a very uh, large event at the Caroline right here in Richmond, uh, located in Bird Park. We're expecting at least 50 vendors to come out. Um, the city, every, every, everybody's coming out from the city of Richmond, um, uh, agencies that are uh, based on um, you know, what they do. They specialize in providing care for veterans and services. So uh, the Virginia Employment Commission is coming out. Uh, the, you name it. I see. People. This list is very impressive. Habitat for Humanity, Virginia Housing Development Authority, AERP, DLW Veterans Outreach Center, Better Housing Coalition, 3rd District, VFW, Post 9908, VFW of Mechanicsville, Disabled Veterans, Retired Service Officers for Tri-Cities, Virginia Senior Services, right. Senior Connection, Central Virginia Legal Aid Society, the Arthritis Foundation, Better Business Bureau, Senior Fund Division, City of Richmond Department of Human Resources, right. my goodness, right. City of Richmond Office of Emergency Management, City of Richmond Department of Fire and Emergency Preparedness, City of Richmond Office on Aging and Persons with Disabilities. We have a call already. Hello, caller. Yes, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. Uh, we well, basically try to get um, some information. In regards to the upcoming resource fair, yes, uh, that's the Veterans Resource Fair. Yeah, can I get a little bit of uh, information on that if possible? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. okay. Are you, yeah. Um, are you looking at us, or are you? Do you have that? What is? Why don't you turn on your TV? And let, okay. all right, and we'll start. I'll start over just for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks uh, a lot. Okay. The resource fair is going to be once again November the seventh. Correct. All right, and it's going to be at the VA Medical Center. No, nope, it's no, going to be at the Caroline. I see that. In Bird Park. At the Caroline yeah. in Bird Park. Yep. And you're going to have just, it looks like you have the entire city of right. Richmond. Right. Is going to have um, be out there to help out with questions and et cetera. There's a list here of 29, actually 30 vendors, and I'm calling them vendors, but they're not really vendors. They're department, city of Richmond, Department of Human Resources, um, and it just goes on, Greater Richmond Transit Authority, Alcohol and Aging Awareness, Alzheimer Association, Project Homes, City of Richmond, Department of Public Utilities. So you kind of get the drift. I do, but let me ask you this. Will there be, like, claim agents? Like, for me, myself, I'm a veteran with a claim in. You know, uh, will there be agents out there to help? Because right now they have that backlog, you know, and it's kind of hard, you know, getting information at this time. Well, maybe people out there that with that. Yeah, absolutely. A great, great call, um, um, question, caller. Um, we're going to have the, uh, a representative from the um, Veterans Benefits Administrations. Now, that's the group that specifically looks at uh, everything from housing benefits to um, education to, um, you know, things about, you know, loans and, and those kind of things. So they'll be there to, to address that for sure. And just uh, for your own, as the word edification would be, um, in your situation, I have a question. Do you have one of the service organizations helping you out with your claim? Uh, yes, yeah, the DAV. The DAV. All right. Yeah. They, they should be able to expedite your claim for you. So wow. I, would, I would stay in touch with them and try to become very friendly with my advocate because that's what he is. He's actually working for you. Right. Well, I 
I've been trying to do so, but my advocate, my actual advocate is in Roanoke. And when I have been able to reach that person, it's not been a whole lot of uh, assistance. All and right. That's why I was wondering, would there be, you know, someone that could probably, you know, pass some information on or something at the fair? Yes, there would be, but since you said Roanoke, let me once again encourage mm -hmm. you to go to VA, to McGuire Hospital, and go into the service organization area, somebody will direct you to it, and speak okay. to one of those guys who are right there, who know everything that's going on, and are there waiting for you to come. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Uh, I'll give it a try. There um, you go. No, it works. There's Trust a me. benefits office. Trust me. Right. And say, say that again? The um, Virginia Benefits Administration is also at the hospital Monday through Friday. They're open until 2 p.m. As long as you sign in before two, they'll see you. Okay. All right? Okay. Good questions and probably benefit somebody else that's watching. I appreciate it. Keep on watching, brother. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay. That's good. That generated a good call. You guys remember to look at the camera and don't talk to the TV, okay? <laughs> the telephone. Uh-oh. Hello, Carla. Getting a little feedback here. Carla? Try again, okay? Call back. Well, I can see this is going to generate a lot of uh, interest here now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we come. This is the one that got me when I was out at the VA, and you started talking about the stand down. Okay. I can't think of anything more important than that. Yeah. Hello, caller? Hello? Yeah, hello. How are you? I'm well. How are you? We're great. We're great. Do you have a question for us? Yes, I wanted to know when the, um, when the Veterans Day program is going to be held since that's approaching very soon. Now, which program are you talking about? The like the work fair kind of thing? Where the the program at the medical center, the annual program. Yes, uh, that's the one. Okay, that program um, will be held. We we usually kick off Veterans Day program on November the eighth. And that's the, that's the Friday before the actual holiday because we give our patients at the medical center a very nice program. We have a uh, speaker that comes in to address you know, the national holiday. Um, we have uh, cake and punch for all of our, our patients and our visitors. And it's just a really good time. So uh, this year, our guest speaker will be Paul Galante, who's the commissioner of the State Veterans Affairs Commission. Uh, he was a prisoner of war during Vietnam and uh, just a, a great speaker and we're happy to have them this year. So it's free and open to the public. Uh, it's from 11 to 1 and uh, we ask you to uh, just be there early because parking is kind of tight. Hell yeah. So um, come ready to uh, have some fun that day. Does okay, that great. That answered it for you. Okay, keep watching because there's going to be more information that we're going to talk about, all right? All right, great. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you thank for you. calling. All right. See, this is very interesting. Now, this is going to be November the 8th. Once again, write the date down, okay? We kick off the Veterans Day celebration on Friday, November the 8th. It's going to start at 11 a.m. It's going to be in the multi-purpose room. And as uh, Des just said, the keynote speaker is going to be Paul Galante. If you've never heard him speak, you're missing something. Make sure you're there. Okay. Um, 30 year birthday. Yes. Uh, McGuire VA Medical Center is having a 30 year birthday in terms of the building that the facility um, is located at right now. It's been 30 years. Really? So uh, we're going to do some things throughout the month of uh, November to also commemorate that. This is going to be a real busy, good month, isn't it? It yeah, is. It sure it is. is. Okay. Well, I had started talking about stand down. I think what I'll do, we'll kind of le we'll lead up to it, okay? And because right here it's saying many people ask during this time of the year, how can I help our veterans? Well, first of all, you can say thank you. Absolutely. And it's such a pleasure now to walk around with my hat on yes, and have people come up and want to mm -hmm. shake hands because you know it wasn't like that. Right. All right. You, you, yeah. Well, maybe you don't because you're so young. Okay. <laughs> I encounter it in my work with veterans all the time. Okay. Then, yeah. then you know this is really something, and it's so great. And I would encourage all of 
you older vets guys that are around my age, I hate to say older, wear your colors. You know, let the public see mm -hmm. that we support our own. Okay, wear your colors. If it's even a cap, if it's a lapel pin, if it's anything. And um, you'll be surprised. My wife has an article coming out on um, November the 10th in the Richmond Times Dispatch. There's a section that calls in my, they call it In My Shoes. And different people write articles about being in my shoes. Okay. And she's written an article called The Veteran in My House, mm -hmm. which is me. <laughs> and I'm rather flattered because she, she put together a really nice package. And while I'm on that, don't forget, she does have the book out. Welcome Home Veteran, which has become very successful. I have to give you a copy. Thank you. You haven't gotten a yeah. copy yet. All right. And, um, you know, we're kind of floating around here because it's, uh, it, there's just so much to talk about. Let me, let me go off track for a minute. Wait, hold on. There we go. Let's see here. Hello, caller? Uh, I'm a like mass cause. I'm a vet. I'm, you know, I'm doing the Vietnam War. Hi. Welcome home, brother. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I didn't get that back in the day. Yes, that's it. That's exactly what I was just talking about. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, you know, I was years where I ain't talked about it. Uh huh. All right. I used go. to be very bitter, but I just started praying and getting counsel, and I let that go. Mm -hmm. Well, my wife addresses that in her book, and she she talks about how counseling. It, you have to talk to somebody that's willing to listen. Okay, that's number one. And number two, which I think is very important, is you have to talk to people who really want to help. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, a lot of times, people in our situation, like yourself, you don't want to go back, and you don't want to relive or retread some of the trails that you went down. But I can tell you from experience that you're not going to get comfortable with yourself until you let all of that come out. You can't keep it stuck forever. It's going to come out some kind of way. Let's make it come out in a positive way. Does that make sense? I, and I, I, I have a second question to ask you. Okay. Uh, I'm in the process of uh, trying to get a, a, a loan to the, to the VA. Uh-huh. Housing? And a, a loan, uh -huh. GI, for a house. Uh, for a house, okay. Yeah, okay. And what I did when I got my money some years ago, I paid off everything. Uh -huh. And that's the worst thing you can do. Uh, uh, you need to have a credit risk. So what I had to do, I had to go get a credit card and buy some stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 got, I got burnt one time, but uh, you pay for your learning. Yeah, uh-huh. So what is but your... I, what I, is I, Uh, well, I appreciate that, and that's what these folks are here for tonight. Um, it, the, what is your question? Well, uh, you just answered it. <laughs> okay. You just, you just answered it. I, I wanted to get one of them hats, and, and, it, and, I, and I submitted another question. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, but, but you've been helping me, man. You, you don't know how much you have. Well, I really appreciate hearing that, and uh, pass the word. You know, let, let the folks know, and guys that you know, who are veterans and are not taking advantage of what is being offered for them, kind of kick them in the butt a little bit. Well, that's what I'd be, I be telling some of the guys. Uh, some of the guys is on the street homeless, and uh, a couple guys I've helped where they, where they got money and stuff. But so, so many guys got pride. Well, pride is part of what we're offering, okay? Yeah, because yeah. what we're doing at the VA, me personally, myself, and a whole lot of other people now have come to the table. We are supporting that pride because we're giving you something. All right? As you said, you got your 100%. Uh, isn't that a blessing? Yes, yeah, it sure is. All right. So that's what I'm talking about. So now, uh, just, just one thing. Let me say this to you because you seem to be out and about. If, they are, if you know homeless vets, make sure that they attend the VA at McGuire Hospital on November the 15th. Our friend and Dora over here is going to go into that in details, but it's very important that they all know about it and make sure you let as many people know about it as you can, okay? Okay, all right. thank you. And thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, see, this is, this is good, all right? Yep. And how can you help? You thankful, sir. Become about, 
Tommy, this is really good. Hello, caller? Yes. How you doing? I'm doing fine. I actually wanted to ask a question. Um, in reference, has there been a huge impact to the veteran, uh-huh. veterans with the shutdown that's going on? Yeah. Is that how is that being handled or how they are being accommodated, if any? All right, we're, we're going to answer that for you. And it's, it's not a pretty picture, but it's not as bad as they're trying to make it seem, okay? Okay. I'm going to let uh, Fernando answer that, okay? Thank you for watching, okay. too, Carl. Well, that's a great question. One of the things that uh, we want um, all of the people home to understand that uh, the Veterans Health Administration, which includes all of the medical centers, all of the hospitals across the countries, are not funded by the same cycle of money that's being impacted uh, by the budget crisis right now, okay? So we're not pulling out any IVs, um, we're not stopping any operations. I just had surgery three weeks ago yep. out at the VA. And, yep. uh, the service is excellent, you, you, and the attitude of the people is top shelf, so it is not affecting you in that, era. I, I, in that area. I hope that answers your question. Now, you're hearing a lot now saying that if it keeps on going on, that they're going to start stopping our checks or whatever. I don't believe that's going to happen. Right. All right. Hello, caller. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi. I have a question. Okay. Okay, about food stamps. Okay, like I'm talking about for November, and people who receive the food stuff next month. I, I'm not too proficient in that area, so I really don't want to tell you something that's not correct. But by the same token, I will tell you based on what I'm hearing on CNN right. and on MSNBC, the news outlets and whatnot. We should be straight by then. I don't think that the government, meaning President Obama, is going to let anybody starve in the U.S. Right, because okay. of this thing. So, does that help you out? Uh, does that help you out? Yeah, that really do help me out. Okay, thanks again for watching, and if you have another question, feel free to call back. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah, this thing, I know people have a lot of questions. With about, good reason. Yeah, with good reason. Yeah. You're absolutely right, okay. All right, so now, come to work. Uh, we're talking about how you can help. And this is one that's very key. Donations, clothing, toiletry, movie tickets, and other items listed on the website. And the website is www.richmond.va.gov. Pretty easy. Richmond.va.gov. Tons of information. Almost, almost tell you how to eat. <laughs> You go on there, there's a real menu on there that'll help you out, answer a whole lot of questions for you. Now we're going to get to you. Okay. okay. This young lady I've, I met at the VA while waiting for an appointment and found out that we had some things in common and found out that she knows what she's doing. Try. And um, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to get into her to talk about the stand down. The young man just mentioned homeless vets. People don't realize that about 70% of the homeless people on the street are veterans. Are so veterans. Mm-hmm. And we need to get to them. And this is one way we're going to do it. It's called Stand Down. You military people out there know what Stand Down means for the rest of, of, the, of the general public. Stand Down, when you have a Stand Down, it means everything stops mm-hmm. and you focus exactly on what that subject pertains, per, is for that day. And for November uh, the 15th, the Stand Down means we're going to look out for the homeless vets. Now Absolutely. you go and you tell them, tell them what's up for that day. Okay, thank you. The Stand Down is a collaborative effect um, with community service providers, nonprofit organizations, um, veteran service organizations that serve homeless, you know, veterans who are homeless. I don't like to say homeless veterans because that defines a veteran as homeless, and this is a person who served our country. And this is an opportunity for us to join our collective efforts for the day, um, providing all kinds of services from mental health organizations to medical organizations, housing. We have several veteran employment organizations, supportive employment programs that come out. We, it's a 
sort of force of everyone in the community who takes a concerned and very vested interest in serving veterans and eradicating homelessness by 2015. It's a goal and we're going to make it. I love it. Okay. <laughs> now, on that day, what will happen is if you, if you, I know if you're homeless, you don't have a TV and are not watching this. But by the same token, if you know some homeless vet or a vet that just needs help, or you, if you do happen to be in that situation, make sure that you get out to McGuire VA Hospital. It's going to start at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. and it's going to go to 9 p.m. You're going to be able to take showers. 3 p.m. Let's not have... Oops, I'm sorry. It's I'm okay. reading it wrong. I'm reading it wrong. <laughs> okay. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yes. I, I apologize for that. But you're going to be able to take showers, get cleaned up. You're going to be able to have some of your medical needs addressed. Right. We're going to have toiletry items. We're giving flu shots, which is a first this year. We've partnered with the nurses department to offer flu shots. We've never done that before. We're also offering information on safe sex and sex education. We've partnered with community organizations to offer free haircuts. Um, we know that persons who don't have funds can't meet their basic needs. We're giving toiletry items out. Um, some, we're also going to provide lunch because that might be the only meal that our veterans get that day. So The public can donate. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. And you, if you have or if you have access to or if you want to spend a couple of dollars, go out and buy a hairbrush or go out and buy some soap or go out and buy some canned goods and, and bring them over to the hospital because these little things are very big things to people who don't have. It. And that's what we're trying to work on. And we're trying to put these fellows and ladies, some of these ladies are out here too, in a position where they get their self-esteem back. And once they get their self-esteem back, they feel very comfortable coming and taking advantage of what else has to be offered. Absolutely. Now, do you want to add some more to this? Because this is exciting. Go for Right. Yeah. I do want to add because, of course, the stand down is, a, you know, it's a single day event. Our efforts continue throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And it's important for folks to understand if you can't get to the stand down on that day, please stay connected. Come visit our office. We are in a community. The Richmond VAMC serves 52 counties in Richmond. That includes Emporia, Petersburg. Charlottesville and Fredericksburg and so we do go throughout you know practically that's the entire state um, to serve our veterans we are in the shelters we're at homeless point of entry every week we're at Salvation Army in Petersburg on a weekly basis and that's important to know and the van yeah it goes around that that would that really impressed me and you'll see what I'm talking about when when the special does run something I didn't know Yep. That you guys tell me about the van. Yep, we have, <laughs> we, um, we have two mobile clinics. One's a 40 foot, um, and the other one's a 28 foot uh, mobile clinic. But it's basically like um, a veteran that's going to their primary doctor's uh, office, but we come to the community. So we go throughout those uh, rural communities that Endure was, was, was uh, mentioning uh, to make sure that no veteran is left behind. Some of the veterans that live in uh, those rural areas. Um, you know, um, cannot get to the medical center in Richmond. So therefore, we have to do something to make sure that they're receiving their, their benefits. So that's why it's important that those mobile clinics go out into the community and provide those primary care services so that they can get their physicals, they can get their exams. If they need specialty care, then they can come into Richmond you know, if they've got a prosthetic arm or, or things like that. But for the most part, we're able to meet them exactly where they are. And the van also um, goes out and supports the Indian tribes that have veterans, because there's quite a few, I don't know if you folks realize that, but uh, there are quite a few of our Native Americans who are veterans. Absolutely. Who, and who are heroes, actually. Absolutely. <laughs> so. Absolutely. That, that's uh, what we do. We uh, serve uh, six of the state-recognized uh, tribal uh, reservations throughout uh, Central And the van Virginia. goes right the to them. It goes right to the reservation. Now, does it go on a monthly basis or? Actually, it goes twice a month. Twice a month? It goes twice a month. All right. Okay. Now, keep going because you, this thing is getting more and more interesting. I'm learning right along with the public out here. Okay. I do want to speak to another concerted effort that's happening again throughout the year because the plan. Um, our secretary has commanded us, and we are in full agreement and compliance with that command to end homelessness by 2015. There's a collective group that has come together that includes many of the organizations that are volunteering and will be present at the Veterans Fair on November 7th. And that's for the Veterans Work Group, and that's a part of our Continuum of Cares 
you know, sort of overseeing that because they are the persons that are the, I guess you would say the one-stop shop for these organizations in the community. We're meeting on a monthly basis. We have a takedown plan. We have a number that we are working towards. So it's not just something that's arbitrary. This is a very deliberate and planful effort to end veteran homelessness. I have a cousin, and uh, viewers have heard me talk about him quite a bit. His name is Morocco Coleman. Okay. His grandfather was the movie driving Miss Daisy. That was mm -hmm. his grandpa, my uncle. And Morocco was uh, director of veteran services for the state of Georgia. And he used to go out at night and go down under the bridges yes. and go into the tunnels and go and find these homeless veterans mm -hmm. and let them know what's going on. Okay. Are we doing that here? Is there a group that does that here? We are doing it. Unfortunately, we're a bit short-staffed right now, so we are not making that effort the way we want to. Because of our partnerships with the police and with other organizations such as the Daily Planet that has an outreach team, as you all may know, the um, Richmond Police has a homeless outreach police enforcement team, mm -hmm. and we have great relationships with those persons. We do outreach at least once a month, what we call street outreach under the bridges, um, Sometimes you'll, we'll pass somebody that's panhandling on a corner and we'll pull over. We do that. That's what we do in our unit. Well, you so. know, we have a group, and, and again, the, the audience has heard me talk about Roots, and that's a, a group of young gentlemen who were recently incarcerated, who have been released, but made a, tra a transition. They really took advantage of the time that they spent and have put this group together. And I'm going to mention it to them and see if Great. we can get some. And I'm Great. pretty sure that the, these guys would be more than willing to go out and also help you out. And I'll help out, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. This is something that's very important. And once again, audience, if you know someone, a veteran that's homeless, it doesn't have to be homeless, just in need, yeah. okay? Or just a guy who's walking around like he, he doesn't know what he's doing or he, has, he just has given up, let them know that these services are available. And these days in particular, this whole month sounds like right. it's going to yeah. be a very exciting month coming up and it's going to reach out to everybody that it can. Now, what else can we do to help well, with this? Uh, that's a great question because a lot of times we target the veteran, but there's also the caregivers. So there's that aunt or uncle that knows that that veteran um, is you know, living down in the basement, has been disconnected from society and the day in, and, and, and day interaction with other people. So we want to reach the fam other family members as well All right. this time. So this is helping with that then, okay. Hello, Carla. Hi, the show is very, very good. I have a question and I just want to clarify something. Where can we donate clothing and shoes and food items? Do we bring them to McGuire Hospital or what? Yes, ma'am. The best place, and actually, I can save you a bit of a trip. The day before the stand down is when we do all of our setup. Um, and so, of course, that day is not open to the public, but if you have any donations, you can bring them up to our office at that time. And we're okay, located on. We have a lot of donations. Can somebody meet us at the door by a car, by a truck? We will certainly try. One of the great needs that we have for the stand down are volunteers. And so if anybody's interested in volunteering, please give us a call at 675-5000, extension 2041, and just let the secretary know that you'd like to volunteer for the stand down. So okay, absolutely. Again, you said if we have a lot of things to do, we bring them the day before the stand down. Right. Yes, ma'am. And, and just, somebody, just call up to the office and somebody will come help. Because I, I know I have a lot of things, and I'm going to spread the word, too. Yeah, very good. Absolutely. So please give us a call so we can coordinate that effort. Uh, well, and what do you need volunteers to do? We need volunteers to sort through donations. We need volunteers to escort our veterans. The Stand Down is a service-oriented fair, so certainly people will come and get coats, they'll get shoes. But what's important is the services that they receive. We want, again, you know, the coat will keep you warm that day, but we want to be able to connect our veterans to services that meet their need on the long term. And so we have persons who, you know, advocate for them at the Stand Down and help them to go to the different service providers. Okay. And after that day, if you still want to donate some other things or services, you can just contact you at that number. Well, after that day, we will yield to our volunteer service organization who um, provides that service on an ongoing basis. Do you have a contact number for them? 
Well, I'm going to give the main hospital number, 675-5000, and you can ask for volunteer services. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, thank I you, ma'am. We you appreciate you. Thank, thank you. you. Now, just as that caller um, brought out, anybody can donate. And just, just to give you an idea, new and gently used coats, winter's coming. New boots. They don't have to be brand new. They could be a pair. You know, we're also style conscious. If you were wearing, uh, what, Gucci last year, yes. and you decide that you're going polo this year or whatever, bring those other boots over because to the veteran, they're brand new. To them, they're brand new. Gloves, winter hats, gloves again. Don't forget, these folks, until we can get them into a living situation, live outside. So they need help. Right. And I think it's important to note as well with donations, new and gently used. I mean, our veterans are living in the street. They're already used to very secondhand items. Um, if you really think it should be tossed, that's probably the best thing to do with that particular item. Let's give our veterans, you know, belongings that, you know, they'll be proud of, won't further, you know, make them feel like outsiders. They feel like that every day anyway. And trust me, you won't miss it. It's been hanging in your closet for the last year and a half or two years or in some cases three or four years. It's just hanging there. Let's give that coat a new life also. Let's bring that coat out into the daylight. All right. This is all good. I'm, I'm excited about this. OK. And it's going to be once again, November the 15th. You don't have to register anything like that. You just come. If you have a vet, bring him. That's how you get him there. Just get him in the car and bring him. And these folks will take care of the rest of it. I'm going to come out and help you out that day myself, okay? Awesome. I think I think this is really good. You do so yeah. much, it'll be great. Yeah, Thank well, you. listen, you know, I'm paying my dues, too, you know, because it's been very good to me. The VA has been very good. I'm alive. Okay, and I thank them for that. So, hello, caller. Hey, hello. Hey, how you doing? You might want to turn your TV down so we can hear you a little better. Okay. Okay, what's your question? Uh, my question is this. You know, I'm, I'm listening to, to the people here talking about the homeless veterans and the services that y'all have for veterans. I'm a veteran myself. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm a 100% uh, PTSD veteran. Well, before you go any further, let me say welcome home to you. Listen, if you come out on the eight on seventh, November the seventh, you might want to come out and take advantage of the opportunity to talk to someone about your particular circumstance. And I hear you when you're saying, you know, you've been hearing this and you've been hearing that. I hear it, I've heard it. I'm a vet myself fifty years ago. I was a Vietnam vet myself. But listen, it's common sense too. Okay? You have to come and ask for it. What they say, seeking you shall receive. In this particular case, that's the law. If you get out there and you ask, and remember, you're talking to real people. There's a lot of vets have a lot of anger in them. I mean, okay. well, I understand what you're saying, but I go over there. I go over there on a weekly basis, uh -huh. and I'm having problems. Even though I'm going over there. What kind of problem? Basis. What kind of problem are you having? Is it a personality issue that someone is not treating you respectfully? No, it's or? not a personality issue. It's, it's, it's their policies over there. Okay. Right. okay. All right. All right. Well, again, if you can come over on the 7th, you will have people there. Am I right? On the 7th, you'll have people there who you can actually ask them and address your particular situation, and I'm thinking that you're going to get a resolution on that. Does that make sense? 
Or he can he can call. Uh, yeah, well, you know, you you saying what you saying? It sounds good, but I've been trying to get a resolution to my problem for over four years, and it's still no resolve. Well, is, I'm is telling you, what what is your problem? Maybe we can help you right my here. Problem Are you, are you, are you a hundred? Like my glasses, for instance. All right, my glasses, I have a prescription for, for shade plus transition lenses. Yeah. But when I go to get my glasses, this, I had a new doctor the last time I went to get my glasses. She took the trade, the shading off of my prescription and told me I had to pay extra to get it. And it is part of my, my prescription. Well, <laughs> the shade, what you're talking about for your eyeglasses, and I, I, I'm wearing some right now, you do have to pay for the extras, okay? But no, this is a prescription. Okay. Prescribed by the doctor. Well, why don't you... I have a problem with the light. Okay, that makes sense. Would it be possible for us to follow up with him um, if he could reach out to Endura? So that we could uh, get down to the specifics. Did you hear? Did you hear what? Uh, yeah, I'm here and I heard what okay. You said, but the last time I got it resolved, but they had they called the hospital police on me because I voiced my opinion with the doctor. They called the hospital police on me. Well, why don't you give this young lady a call, Endora, and what would be that number, Endora? The same. Yes. Same number that the hospital six seven uh, six seven five five thousand. And then you go to extension 2041. 2041. Okay. And you'll get this young lady, Endura Tarawali. Did I say it right? Yes. All right. Hey, get the patient advocates over there. When you call them, they never return your call. Uh, this lady is sitting right here. If you're looking at us, she's smiling at you right now. Right. And okay. she's telling you to call her personally and okay. remind her when you call. I'm the fellow that spoke to you on television. Okay? okay. All right. I remember that. All right, please do. All right? And thank you for watching, Chick. All right, bye. Good. And you're going to hear a lot of that. Sure. Okay, because it's public, it's a hospital. Yep. Oh, so awesome. everybody is not going to be smiling. I'm smiling, like I said, what, 40 years of service with these folks, and I'm alive. I mean, people look at me and they say, well, and you look great. Well, they don't know. What went into me looking great? Mm -hmm. And the V sa has saved my life. So now I see you have these. What, what is I this? I come bearing gifts. Yeah. What is this? So this is the 1 800 number, which I think is really important because, as you mentioned, some people don't have TVs mm -hmm. and some people are listening to us on the air. Some people may not have, you know, you can barely find, find a pay phone now, but if you are able to find one, it's the 1 800 number to reach the National Call Center for Homeless Veterans. Let's put it up. Let's see. Can you get in? Can you get that, guys? So, yes, it's... We have some very good um, camera people here. 877-424-3838. And that it? number is answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Can you see that number? Okay, write it down. Once again, tell you you got to have a pen and pad. Write the number down so that you have it. And listen, let's get busy, okay? Let's get busy. This is very good. Okay? Yes. Yeah. What else you got? You got anything else? You didn't bring anything? What? <laughs> what? Hey, I'm slipping. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, listen. You know, this is, this has been really good. I'm I'm impressed, very impressed with what both of you are doing out there. There's you know having given us the opportunity to film. You hear me talking about the filming? Um, we filmed just about all day. Yep, we Not sure did. We uh, covered central registration. Uh, we went on to uh, the Apollo trauma unit. Uh, we spent some time over at the therapy pool. Um, you know, we just um, you know, we spent some time at our uh, uh, cardiac uh, surgery unit, which was very very interesting. Yeah, it sure was. Yeah. So you know, we just really appreciate you you know spending the time to come out and and and, and you know be willing to document the great things that uh, our staff do each day for our veterans. It's unbelievable the amount of service that 
we do day in and day out. You know, we don't always get it right, but we try awfully hard. Well, this hospital is rated in the top 10 in the United States, military and civilian. And I think it's number one in the military uh, circle of hospitals. And it's the only VA hospital that you can get a heart transplant. The first hospital to do it is the only hospital that's doing it right now. And when we were doing that filming that day and, and Fernandez took us into the coronary section and that doctor showed us, I mean, that was just amazing. Right. How they have an instrument now that they can actually put inside of you. Mm -hmm. That'll work as your heart until, you're, until a heart is available for right. you. Right. And when that young lady said that they have patients that have been wearing that for eight years. Yep. I mean, they're literally keeping, mm -hmm. keeping us alive. Mm -hmm. yep. It's fantastic. So there you go, folks. This, this is good. Now, if anybody else has any questions, now's the time to call because these folks sitting right here, these are not just, you know, workers out there. These folks are in charge of things, and they take care of business. Trust me on that one. They take care of business. So we talked about this. I'm going to go back to this November 15th. Make sure that you get there or get somebody there that you know, a nephew, a son, a grandson, Anybody, these young men that are coming home now seem to have a lot more problems than we did. You yeah. know, we kept quiet. A lot of us kept quiet about ours. These fellows that are coming in now are committing suicide. Yep. And, I mean, that's unheard of. How do you get 29 a day yeah. committing suicide? Why? You know why. Over and over mm -hmm. and over. You can't go in and out of combat in and out of combat, over and over, and it not affect you some kind of way, some kind of way. See, and I think you've made an import, important point there as well, Mr. Coleman. You know, the VA can't solve every problem, but what you will have is an opportunity to be part of a community. I think, you know, many of our veterans are incredibly isolated, as you mentioned. You know, the Vietnam veterans were not embraced by the country, and, you know, we've apologized. We're paying for that. You are an ambassador. You're building a bridge between the medical center and the community, and we appreciate that. Isn't that nice? And we're going to keep trying. You know, we actually are interfacing with a veteran right now who sleeps outside. He's homeless. And he says every time we see him, I don't trust the VA. You know, medical care is a right for our veterans. It is a right. And so, you know, maybe the housing is not your issue, but medical care, that's, you know, you can come to the medical center and get that need met. And you have to remember something, Vets, when you, and I've said this on, on the show a couple of times now, and I'm going to keep saying it, when you sign that paper, volunteering, or, yeah, that's, it is volunteer now, to be in the U.S. military, they also agreed to take care of you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. All right? So if, if you have issues that are not service connected, you can still come in and talk to them about it. And when you see the, the show that we're putting together, we take you through the whole process of how you register, come in, as, as Des was saying, we show you how to go to central registration, we show you the path that you take after that, and that'll be out in about a month, you'll hear about it, it'll be on this network, and I'm sure that they will run it many times because it's that important, all right? Now, we're getting, getting close to, to uh, shutdown here. This has been kind of moving fast, I tell you. It doesn't seem a lot like, going on yeah, this month. Yeah, the time. Is that, I mean, right now, this, yeah. you know, it seems like we just sat down a minute ago, right. and I'm looking up here. <laughs> so, all right, any, any issue that you want to go back to? Because well, I just wanted to, to mention that during the homeless stand down, uh -huh. uh, that multipurpose room looks like a Walmart. There are so many uh, items for a veteran to be able to receive in terms of coats, those hats, socks, shoes, uh, undergarments, um, just an outpouring of supplies that they're available to get. So, you know, it's not, um, hasn't got that cold yet, but uh, it will be within the next couple of weeks. And a nice warm coat would be uh, a welcome, you know, uh, piece of uh, clothing mm -hmm. for a veteran that's out on the street. Okay, so you heard it. And it's common sense. It's common sense, and you'll notice in my wife's book, she talks about how she's observed over the years how we greet each other when we see, you know, I've been in, in Africa and seen a South African soldier with airborne wings on, and it's airborne all the way and then some, but, you know, there's a brotherhood, mm -hmm. and we need to be taking care of our brothers. 
And what better way to take care of our brothers than to let them know what's available to them and kind of kick them in the butt to get them out there to take advantage. Mm -hmm. A lot of pride issues, but you're making a mistake. Your pride is in the wrong direction. You should be proud of the services that are available to you. That's where the pride should come in. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Finishing up. You guys want to round out with anything? I know you have something. Dad, you talk all the time. Now, come on. Well, <laughs> well, well, I do. And like you said, I think we've covered it. You know, this is a very uh, exciting time for veterans. And, and just in terms of what, you know, we're able to do for veterans right now, uh, it's an exciting time to be at the VA. Hello, Carla. Hi, just one quick question. Approximately how many people are going to be there, or do they usually have, on the stand-down day? I mean, when you ask for people, are you speaking of volunteers? Or? Veterans, I'm sorry, veterans. Yep. Last year we had over 500 participants. Um, these are predominantly persons who are homeless, and we provide direct services to them at that event. So you expected at least 500? Or more. Or more, yes, ma'am. Right. Okay, just, just trying to get a, get, a, um, like, get a number, a quantity for some items I want to donate. So thank you, okay? Thank yeah. you. And, the, and okay, to further bye. speak on, on that, that uh, question, uh, there is a number that we can look at in a period of time. We call it a pit number, mm -hmm. but basically it's, a, it's an estimate of how many homeless are in a particular county or state you know, or city or whatever the demographic may be uh, to help us understand what we're up against you know, mm -hmm. in terms of bringing them you know, in for services and things like that. So we prepare for as many veterans um, that, are, you know, that those numbers are telling us. This is, is this the fifth year that you're doing this? No, we've, we've been doing this homeless stand down for quite a number of years. All right. It's more Here, than 12, we know. Well, here's my question. How are the results? How have the results been follow-up? Like the people that have come in, have you been able to help a significant number of them? Absolutely. We, you know, it's a, you know, it's one of those pieces where you don't know has the service been the best outcome and the fact that we know more people are coming forward. So as you, you know, have a show like this, more people may come forward as a result of that. Does that mean there are more homeless veterans or does that mean we're doing better outreach? I got you. So we have to grapple with that. We do provide very comprehensive services beyond, you know, housing is supportive employment, it's, you know, job training. There are also other services provided throughout the veterans, you know, system such as VRAP has made a difference. You know, it's an opportunity to get an education, which would then increase your ability to have a living wage, which would then change your housing outcome. Uh -huh. We're able to faster connect persons to the service um, service connected pension if they're eligible for that. We're able to make that connection faster and once you get those benefits, you can change your housing situation. We know the best way to change homelessness is with income. So that's a something that we do very well in terms of increasing benefits and jobs, you know. Well, I'm going to say two things, um, jobs. You just said that. For you folks that are looking or know people that have businesses mm -hmm. and they want to increase their potential, mm -hmm. hire a vet. You're going to get someone who has discipline, mm -hmm. who has training in a special field, who will be appreciative of the opportunity and who will have a work ethic that you have not seen lately. I know when I was the director for the North America bank card for um, almost all of the East Coast, I had to go through 12 or 15 people to get one person to hire. And that person probably didn't work out. Right. All right? For you business owners, you get a $9,400 tax credit for hiring a vet. Mm -hmm. That in itself is incentive, okay? You get a $9,400 a $9, discount tax off your taxes for hiring a vet. Hire a couple of vets, and guess what? Your numbers go up. That's number one. Number two, if you have property, housing, that you have rooms or you're trying to do something with that piece of property, I know I have people asking me all the time, do you know how I can get this house full? Well, you can if you make it available to vets. And you get paid for it. It's not something, it's not a gimme. 
you get paid for it. So if you have property that you're trying to build up and, and use, I know several people who have homes and they don't, just don't know how to go through the process. I think you can help them with that process. We do maintain a database. Um, those properties are paid for by the veteran. Mm -hmm. So once we increase their benefits, we help them get gainful employment, they'll be able to pay rent. So. Okay. This has been very good. It has been. Thank and you. And I want to I thank you two personally for what you do out there and for what you're making it possible for other people mm -hmm. to do out there. I mean, it's not, people don't realize it's a government facility. So there are rules and regulations. Right. That's important. But you guys are making it easy to get around that. So I'm going to say to you, I only have four more weeks coming up. If either one of you want to come back in with anything, if there's some new news that comes up, if there's something that we need to get out right away, just give me a call. Okay. And I'll squeeze you in. Okay. Oh, thank you. All That's right. generous of you. Oh, thank no. You. And, well, it's important. This is an important situation. Now, next week, we're going to do something a little different. Okay, um, something that I haven't seen done. This is the 50th anniversary here for the Soul Seekers. They're a gospel quartet. I mean, it's singing, gospel singing. I'm not somebody that's crazy about Christian music, but I love gospel. The Soul Seekers are going to be here, and they're going to surprise you when we sit down to, to interview Avon and, and whoever else he brings on. These fellows do a whole lot in the community as far as prostate cancer is concerned. Nice. So we're going to talk about that. Hopefully we're going to be able to show a great DVD of, of them performing and get a, little bit of, get a little bit of church up in here. Okay. <laughs> and then the they other thing. They never have too much church. You got that right. And especially nowadays, we need all of that help we can get. And another thing that we're going to do, you know, each week I talk about the martial arts training that we do. Um, at the Henrico Dojo and our outreach program. Our outreach is expanding. We're getting ready to go into the public school system. Here in Richmond, we have one school that we're going to try. We're trying that. So if you have any child five years and up and you'd like to get them involved, call me directly, 804-714-7983. I'll tell you that the music got a little messed up. Next week, I'm going to bring that theme song, the new one, back in. It's called Gomez. And it's, I'm actually promoting it because I'm doing all the percussion on it. And my friend Great. Frank Abel wrote it. And it's going to be a hit. <laughs> it's going to be a hit. It hasn't been released yet. Do not forget this book. If this book had been written 40 years ago, a whole lot of us would be in a better situation and would have had an easier time doing that past 40 years. It's available online at my-vet.net, my-vet.net. Thank you, Fernandez. Thank you, Ed. Okay. Pleasure. Thank you, thank you. And Dora, I know we're going to be doing a lot to get. Oh, yeah. It's just, and, you know, it's just, I don't want to say it wrong. That's what it is. I know, you know, I know. And all of us dabble in languages from traveling and whatnot, and you know, Sometimes you screw it up and you don't want to do that. The worst thing you can do is, is, is mess up somebody. You did it great. Yeah.